the Cardinals set to kick off their preseasons here on Nine News and bang heads for the first time since last season, of course. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tony Zarella, joined by Dave Logan, the voice of the Broncos. Great to be working with you. Thank you, Tony. Same to you. Brought our mock towels with us tonight. <laughs> nice and uh, cool here in Tempe. <laughs> you know, when you go 6-10, and ten, you can't wait to start banking heads again. So the Broncos have been looking forward to this game for about seven months. You know, you're right. Most time players aren't anxious to get back to training camp, but after going 6-10, and ten, I think the players are ready to go. The, the coaching staff is anxious to get this season started, and we do just that tonight. Nobody more so than Terrell Davis. We all know he's coming back from the knee injury, uh, and you wouldn't have been surprised if they had held him out of this one. I thought they might keep Terrell back a little bit and maybe play him next week, but Terrell and Mike Shanahan talked. Uh, TD is ready to go, of course, last October in Mile High Stadium, suffering a terrible knee injury. He has worked very, very hard to get himself to this point and that's to be able to compete at this level. We'll see him for about 15 plays tonight. He figures to get five or six carries. Likewise for Brian Greasy, there's been a lot of talk about Brian being much more comfortable this camp and uh, having more control of the offense. Well, that remains to be seen. I think he's had a very good camp thus far in Greeley. Uh, very, very accurate with his throws. He seems to be more comfortable and confident that that could possibly be true. But a big preseason for Brian Greasy, certainly. Now, certainly his job to lose. For all the talk about a quarterback controversy, I don't know that that exists. But can Gus battle and change their minds in this preseason? Well, Gus Frost got to have a big, big preseason. And certainly coming out and getting game playing time will help him. He'll play tonight in both quarters two and three. He figures to get extensive playing time the next couple of games. He's a guy that's proven to be able to play in this league. He's a Pro Bowl player. But right now, it's Brian Greasy's job to lose. One guy who did not make the trip. Maybe he wishes he did. As hot as it is here, it's Trevor Price, who's back in Greeley working out by himself. Yeah, he got a couple of workouts today, a couple tomorrow, <laughs> all in pads. But uh, Trevor Price is back, and I can guarantee you, he is happy, the Bronco organization happy. This is one of the outstanding young defensive talent, uh, talents in all of pro football. He's a guy that has to be here this year. I know his teammates are finally anxious. They're happy about banging heads with another team. They're moments away from kickoff. We'll have it for you here on 9 News when our coverage of the Broncos and the Cardinals continues from 10. City of Tony Zarella, Dave Logan. You know these two teams went 6 and 10 a year ago. Obviously, people back in Colorado, all Bronco fans would like to think that they're going in a different direction than the Cardinals. Uh, tonight, we'll not answer that question, but it is the first test, and uh, we'll get a decent look at the starters for a quarter or so. Dave Logan, of course, the voice of the Broncos, will have the call tonight. Tony, thank you. It is a very, very hot night here in Tempe. It's Mike Shanahan takes a look at his troops that about an hour and a half ago on the plain surface and it is natural grass here in Tempe but as you can see close to 120 degrees on the surface the uh, forecast for tonight partly cloudy there is a chance of rain but the temperature at kickoff a toasty 109 degrees Cardinals have won the kickoff or won the toss excuse me and they will receive and Mario Bates along with Clarence Williams back for the Cardinals. Bronco starters figure to play about 15 plays tonight and then you will see second and 13 performers for the duration. Jason Elam has it on the tee and the 2000 preseason is underway. This will be Mario Bates at the one. Up into the Z crosses the 20 yard line. And a flag on the play. Ian Gold, Nate Wayne, and Jason Moore down there for the Broncos. And this is going to go against Arizona. Referee tonight is veteran Ed Hockley. One hundred and nine degrees doesn't seem like we should be playing football, but I know Tony, you and I walked down to the field prior to the game, and after about a five minute stint, we were soaking wet. Holding receiving team during the return. Ten yard penalty. Arizona keeps the ball first down. I'm not sure if Daryl Collins wasn't shaken up there. Uh, this is certainly not what they want to see on the opening kickoff. They're going to be using him a lot tonight. So we take a look at Jake Plummer. Daryl Pounds is down at the 30 yard line. Jake Plummer in his fourth NFL season out of Arizona State. Jake the Snake didn't have a particularly good year last year. You take a look at the uh, backfield. Pittman and McAvick at the backs a good receiving core more Sanders and Gedney we'll talk more about Gedney a little bit later Dishman and Holmes the guards Shelton and Clement two outstanding young tackles and Mike Devlin replaces Mike Gudadaria at center Gudadaria a free agent acquisition in the offseason injured a knee early in camp take a look at the front four for the Broncos Tanavasa trailer Rager in place 
of Trevor Price. Wayne Wilson and Romanowski, John Mobley, of course, not playing. First down in the pocket, and the throw is going to be incomplete over the 25-yard line. That catch by Rob Moore, Jimmy Spencer on the tackle, but a first down throw by Arizona. This is one of the things that the Cardinals are going to do this year. You know, they have Mark Tressman who came over from the Niners a couple of years ago. They love, well, they call it the West Coast offense. It went south on them a year ago, but they love those short slants. You're going to see a lot of this. First down at the 27. One back set for Arizona. Plummer again to throw. Looks right. Throws right. Pass is going to be completed to Sanders. He'll have another first down. Sanders, who led the Cardinals in receptions last year, tackled there by Terrell Buckley. Well, that will be a gain of close to 12, and on consecutive first down throws, the Cardinals have moved the chains twice. Buckley, of course, in for Crockett tonight on the uh, left side. Hey, Sanders, you mentioned he uh, had a big year last year, but only found the end zone twice. So if anybody has motivation this year, it's Frank Sanders. And now uh, Buckley just too far back on him. Sanders had 79 receptions last year to lead the Cardinals. First down. And the first running play, and this is going to go for huge yards into Bronco territory. That's Michael Pittman. Scampers out of bounds after a gain of close to 20. Pittman trying to hold off first round draft choice Thomas Jones they say Pittman runs better between the tackles but that time the 215 pounder just bounced it outside Tony and nobody was there for the Broncos yeah Spencer was the only guy that had a shot at him but he was still about five yards out so three plays and three consecutive first downs for the Cardinals the play fake and the home run ball down the left sideline pass is going to be caught in the end zone and that will be a touchdown. Rod Moore in the end zone beat Jimmy Spencer and the Cardinals with the game's first points. Rod Moore, top of your screen, runs by Jimmy Spencer, who had a cushion of about 12 yards. Back-to-back -back plays for Spencer getting beat, this time by Moore. Well, what a great throw. As a fabulous throw. That ball just on the outside shoulder for Rob Moore. Spencer about a step behind. The Cardinals four plays take it the distance. Kerry Blanchard with the extra point try. He was acquired in the offseason as well. Last year the Cardinals kicker was Chris Jackson. Blanchard splits the uprights and with a minute and 45 seconds gone here in the first quarter, Arizona takes the opening kickoff. And in four plays, they now lead a four-play drive to open this football game, have taken a 7-0 lead. Jake Plummer to Rob Moore. And I'm sure for a team that was as ineffective as the Cardinals were last year offensively, kind of a nice way to start even a preseason game. Well, we've seen the two Jakes over the last two years. You know, two years ago, had a phenomenal year. They go to the playoffs, beat the Cowboys down in Dallas, and actually hung with Minnesota for a while. Last year, it all fell apart. He had the bad thumb and the throwing in, so uh, obviously he's looking like he did two years ago, at least on that drive. Gary Blanchard has it teed up, and this will be Delta O'Neal, the Broncos' first-round draft choice from the one. To the 10, 15, O'Neal's going to be upended at about the 18-yard line. Tackle on the play by James Folston. Delpho O'Neill, you figure to see a lot of him this year, both as a return man and also as a nickelback. Brian Greasy, the quarterback, in his third year at the University of Michigan. And he'll have a familiar face in the backfield for the first time since last October. Terrell Davis, Howard Griffith, the fullback. McCaffrey and Smith, the wide receivers. Dwayne Carswell, the tight end. Lenny Friedman starts for Mark Slareth, the left guard. Neal, the other guard. Jones left us with Nalen at center. First down, Denver from the 18. Handoff. This is Terrell Davis. Davis powers his way over the 20-yard line. Hit there by Ronald McKinnon, the middle linebacker. So not a surprise there. Terrell Davis gets the first carry of the game, his first since last October. As we take a look at the Cardinal starting defensive line. Otis, McCoy, Jerry Drake, and Burke up front. Rutledge, McKinnon, and Folston, the linebackers. Williams and Knight, the two corners. Tillman and Lassiter, inexperienced at safety. Second down, Davis again with a nice cutback. And Terrell Davis is going to be stopped a couple of yards shy of the first down. Kwame Lassiter up from his safety spot to make the tackle. So Terrell Davis 
on the first two plays, Tony, for the Broncos, carries the load. You know, the Broncos offensive line has the edge here. The uh, Cardinals playing without all four guys that started for him last year. Wadsworth has hurt. Simeon Rice holding out. And uh, you give the edge there to the Bronco line, and they're showing it right there. You see Davis last year, his numbers prior to the injury. Third and two from the 26. Greasy's first throw. Pass is going to be a little bit high, incomplete, intended for Ed McCaffrey, who had good position on Tom Knight for the slant, but Brian Greasy a little bit too tall with the throw, and the Broncos must punt. So not the way you want the Denver offense to start. Three and out, but certainly the way you want to see Terrell Davis run the football. Tom Ruin feels a low snap and gets it away. From the 20. Still on his feet up over the 30-yard line. That is Mac Cody. Cody led the NFC in punt returns last year. And with an effort there of about 12 yards, gives Arizona excellent field position. Timeout on the field, 11.37 to go here in the first quarter. Cardinals, welcome back to Tempe. Dave Logan, Tony Zarello with you. Cardinals uh, took the opening kickoff, moved 87 yards in four plays, taking a minute and 45 seconds, and lead the Broncos 7-0. We'll see if Denver's defense can get things cranked up here a bit. Yeah, it's interesting. The Cardinals aren't exactly known for showcasing their uh, offense in the preseason. Tobin always likes to hold back, uh, but they came out there. I think a couple of defensive breakdowns at the end of that drive are what cost them. So Plummer for the second time. First down at the 32. Get any emotion. This is Pittman with a huge hole. Pittman is over the 40, 45 yard line. Eric Brown and Billy Jenkins for the Broncos, but the fifth consecutive play that the Cardinals have picked up a first down. Well, you don't want to see a hole like this. Pittman, as you mentioned, trying to hold off Thomas Jones, the rookie out of Virginia, cuts back, looking a little like Terrell there, and this is what makes him special. He thinks he's going to win the job because of bursts like that. Maatanavasa that time thinking that Jake kept the ball, and Pittman with a huge hole. First down at the 47. Draw. Pittman. And that easily the best play the Broncos have had in the game's first six. Billy Jenkins, who was acquired in a trade with the St. Louis Cardinals, up to make the stop. Jenkins is a guy that has looked very good in camp. Excellent tackler, hard hitter. And you keep hearing the word leadership thrown out a lot when you talk about Billy Jenkins. Michael Pittman out of the game and Thomas Jones the first round draft choice in his place second and eight Plummer deep one down the left sideline is going to be a little bit too far for Rob Moore pretty good coverage that time by Jimmy Spencer third and eight Jake Plummer coming off a disastrous 99 season well, the only, on had, form, Dave, it really is. Had only nine touchdowns and 24 interceptions. The 24 interceptions, the most by a Cardinal player, and this will take a few of you back, 1967 with Jim Hart through 30 picks. You're dating yourself, though. <laughs> I do remember Jim Hart, third and eight. Plummer with more in motion, drops straight back. No pressure. Plummer has all night. Penalty flag thrown. Ball's going to be completed up over the 40-yard line. That would be enough for a first down. Frank Sanders with the catch. The hit by Al Wilson, who remains on the turf. But I think this is going to come back against the Cardinals. Well, the Broncos are catching a break on that one. Holding. Offense, number 70. 10-yard penalty. Repeat third down. They got left tackle L.J. Shelton with the hold. Left side. Tony, you can see Shelton right there. Yeah, that's not a hold, that's a tackle. Working on Kavika Pittman and just collared him to the ground. L.J. Shelton, if you're a basketball fan, you probably remember his dad, Lonnie Shelton, played 10 years in the NBA. Most, notab no, most not notably with the uh, Seattle Supersonics, Al Wilson still flat on his back. 
been a tough summer day for the uh, Bronco linebackers. Yeah, John Mobley with arthroscopic surgery, which was a little more detailed than they first thought going in. Mobley figures to miss about three weeks. Glenn Cadrez has been out the last week with a pulled hamstring, and now Al Wilson. Hopefully just has a stinger. I think he uh, got his neck jammed right there when he launched himself into Frank Sanders. Wilson, the first round draft choice last year, six feet and 240 pounds out of Tennessee. I think most people, Tony, would say he had an excellent rookie season. Yeah, he's a tremendous player. I think he surprised some people. You know, when he was at the Combine before the rookie year, all anybody talked about was his size, only six feet, but he's got a little single carry in him. We're going to see this again from a different angle, and I think you're right. I think he throws himself at uh, Frank Sanders. At Sanders and uh, jams the neck up a bit. He walks off the field. I think he's all right. Boy, Al Wilson like a torpedo on that shot. Let's hope that he's going to be okay. The penalty moves the ball just inside the Cardinal 40-yard line. It is third and 16. And Plummer will throw. Again, not much pressure. Ball over the middle is going to be too high. Deflected. And <laughs> did Gedney hang on? No, Billy no. Jenkins, I believe, with the deflection, Chris Gedney had a shot at it. Looked like he got both hands on it at about the 25, but could not pull it in. He was pretty close. Uh, I thought Jenkins had a shot to pick it. In fact, he should have had it. I think Jenkins anticipated the receiver actually catching it and was a little surprised by the ball. So the Cardinals will have to punt it for the first time. Scott Player with a nice kick. This is Delta O'Neal from the 12. Penalty flag thrown as O'Neal squirts out to about the 20. A punt of 37 yards. Tackle on the play by Johnny Rutledge, and we'll wait and see what the call is. Yeah, this will go against the Broncos. Illegal block in the back by the receiving team number 42 during the return. Half the distance to the goal, Denver keeps the ball, first down. So that is Detron Smith with the penalty, and we've got a timeout on the field. 9.28 to go here in the first quarter. Broncos will have it for their second opportunity when we return. Cardinal 7, Denver nothing, timeout, and we'll be back right after these messages. Back in Tempe, the Broncos will have it for their second time, trailing the Cardinals 7 nothing. No report yet on Al Wilson. We'll uh, try to find out from the sideline as to the extent of his injury, but at least he did get up and walk off the field. Brian Greasy, second series, and they start at their own eight. Play fake. Greasy, short throw left flat. It's going to be caught by Dwayne Carswell. Bumped out of bounds there by James Folston. Carswell has had a very good training camp and you keep hearing his name is only a blocker and yet Dwayne Carswell really is a guy that I think if they give him the opportunity he'll make some catches. Well I think he can catch better than people think he can. You always hear about his blocking but this has been tight end uh, committee so to speak in Greeley to the point where Byron finds himself uh, on the third chart but right there you see Carswell with a nice, uh, nice reception. Second down from the 15 here comes Terrell. Right side he lunges forward to close to the 20. Hit there by Thomas Burke. So Terrell Davis, that's his third carry as we chart the progress of TD coming off that serious knee injury. And thus far, I would say the results have been just fine. I do wonder if he's hitting the holes with the same burst that he's known for hitting them, Dave. I mean, that's what makes him so special. And he, I don't know in the back of his mind if he's hey, 2%, 5% a little tentative. Greasy to throw in the flat. It's going to be gathered by Howard Griffith, who's hit immediately by James Folston. Griffith back in his final year, at least of his existing contract, but certainly gives the Broncos a viable receiving threat out of the backfield. And a good throw there by, by Brian Greasy. 
I think everybody remembers Folston from his days with the uh, Raiders. Folston in his seventh year out of Northeast Louisiana. Gain of four, second and six. You see the clock, 8-15 and counting here in the first quarter. Broncos trail the Cardinals 7-0. Greasy to throw. Deep ball, left sideline. Pass is going to be intended for Rod Smith. Knocked away and a fine defensive effort by Tom Knight. Knight step for step with Rod Smith. Knight the first round draft choice of the Cardinals back in 97. Usually Knight is the kind of player that needs a little help when they go deep. You know, everybody talks about the Broncos not having a deep threat. I think Rod's a little quicker than people think he is, but Knight holding his own on this one. And the ball may be a tad underthrown on that play. Brings up third down, third and six. Broncos failed to convert their only other third down opportunity. Smith in motion, blitz on the way, greasy. Over the middle pass is going to be incomplete, a little bit too high for Travis McGriff. And Kwame Lassiter, the free safety, there to make certain that McGriff did not hang on. So for the second time, and Mike Shanahan can't be pleased with this, the Broncos will have to punt it away here in the first quarter. Well, they continue the search for the number three receiver. I don't know uh, what we're going to see out of Andre Reed tonight. He's certainly going to be on the field later, but uh, with McGriff a step ahead of him on the depth chart, I think a lot of people wonder if McGriff can stay a step ahead of him. Tom Ruin with the kick, and once again, this will be Mac Cody from the 30. The boys one, two, three, and Cody is going to be swarmed under after a return of five yards. Good special team coverage there by... Steve Russ, amongst others. Now we've got another timeout on the field. 7.47 to go here in the first quarter from Tempe, Arizona. Cardinals lead the Broncos 7-0. A workout is its own reward. Introducing Propel Fitness Water. There are no cheering crowds. Just the sound of your own breathing. Six essential vitamins, a splash of fruit flavor. I'm in training for life. From the makers of Gatorade, everything in balance. I don't live to exercise. Exercise to live. The first fitness water is the next water, Propel. Yeah, yeah. Other car dealers may say they can match our low, no-haggle prices. But you know they're going to get you. They may get you in the options. They may get you in the payments. But you know they're going to get you. Unless you're buying a John Elway Auto Nation USA. We posted 3,000 low, no haggle prices on 3,000 cars, trucks, and SUVs. Prices you can see, savings you can trust, finance rates you can understand. John Elway Auto Nation USA. It's about time, it's about change. Because you know they're going to get you. Your first bank, you're the home team. Now, what does that mean? Better customer service. Why? We're locally owned. We care. Say you want to open a new account. We give you lots of options. Including free checking for a year. How about a loan? We give you an answer right here, right now. So the customers know you're there for them, right? Right. In person, over the phone, or online. All right, let's get to work. Trying to keep some of the players cool on the sidelines. And maybe those that are helping the players, the trainers. Heck, that's where I'd be standing, I guarantee you. Come on, man. It dropped down to 109 by game time. Yeah. Very, very hot here tonight in Tempe, Arizona. Broncos' first preseason game of the year. Cardinals have it for their third opportunity in the first quarter. They lead 7-0. And Jake Plummer still at quarterback. Jimber with the blitz. Plummer throws it away incomplete before he gets dumped. Tanabasu was there. There's a late penalty flag thrown. Pittman was there. And Al Wilson, good to see, is back in the game as well. I think this is going to be intentional grounding. It is. A tremendous play. Tremendous rush by Ma. Beating, you know, this offensive line for the Cardinals, you talk about behemoths. I mean, these guys are all over three bills. And they didn't waste much time. They put the pressure on. Intentional grounding. Offense number 16. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul, and it's a loss of down. Brings up second down. So an 11-yard penalty, it will be second and 21. And a good job by the Denver defense disguising until the last minute. You can see Al Wilson 
there first, but I don't think Plummer ever had a chance to change the play. No, he just blew by Shelton. Second and 21. Counter play, this is Pittman. And Pittman hit by Al Wilson after a short game. You can start to see now Denver's defense kind of settling in a rhythm a little bit. They got hit so early that four play drive for 87 yards, all four plays, of course, first downs, including the last one. But now with the penalty, you've got the Cardinals backed up third and 21. You see Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator for the Broncos. He's a guy we talked to today. He thinks he likes his unit. He said, we're going to have to improve. We're going to get better. But I like what I see thus far. Third and 21 for the Cardinals. Deep drop, pressure, and down goes Jake Plummer. Ma'a Tanavasa. In his seventh year from the University of Hawaii, there to put the tackle on Jake Plummer. You can see Keith Trailer around the edge, really creating that opportunity right side of your screen, the little stunt. Trailer comes around, Tanavasa just splits the double team block and gets there to Jake Plummer. And Scott Player for the second time tonight will kick it away. It is a high kick. Delta O'Neill awaits. No fair catch signal. Still on his feet, but he'll lose yardage. Somebody's going to have to teach Delta that you got to raise that right arm. Keep those folks off you. Well, we invite you to join us. The uh, Bronco huddle will officially start this Monday night. Tony and I will be up in Greeley with the head coach of the Broncos, Mike Shanahan. If you want to find out what he thinks of tonight's game and his players' performance, join us both for the Broncos huddle. That will be Monday at 6.30, live from training camp in Greeley. Denver's best field position thus far in the first quarter. They start the drive from their 31. Greasy's still in the game. So is Terrell Davis. And this is TD left side up over the 35-yard line. Davis, of course, led the AFC in rushing three straight seasons, 96, 97, 98. He was injured last year. And I think Terrell has admitted that it's going to take him a few games. He'll progressively play more as they go through the preseason. Uh, one quarter tonight is not going to answer all of his questions or his doubts, but it's, uh, I, I think instead of waiting, he couldn't wait to get back in there and just test it out a little bit. Gain of four, second and six as McCaffrey goes in motion. Greasy, short drop. Buys himself some time. Greasy on the run is going to step out of bounds just as he gets enough for the first down. Brad Otis, six-year player from Wayne State in hot pursuit. But Brian Greasy right there showing his ability to, if things break down, make something happen and do so with his feet. And a smart play. He had the time back there, but obviously uh, didn't have the receiver open. Uh, Arizona with a tremendous job in coverage. 5.45 left here in the first quarter. Cardinals lead the Broncos 7 to nothing. Mike Shanahan has that frustrated look of a man who would like to see this first team offense get things going on this drive. First down handoff, Davis. Terrell breaks the line of scrimmage out to about the 49-yard line. That will be his longest run. Pat Tillman there to make certain he didn't get any further. No offensive line improvises and adjusts as well as this offensive line. They're outweighed again. They always are. Friedman's in, of course, for Mark Schlereth, who's not uh, playing tonight. He comes back, uh, I believe, to workouts on Monday. And every year, somehow, with Gibbs, they, they continue to adjust and get the job done against guys that outweigh him 30 pounds. Davis in his sixth year now, one of only three players to rush for 6,000 yards in his first four NFL seasons. As Terrell again hit hard that time by Ronald McKinnon, the middle linebacker. But the other two players, aside from TD, Eric Dickerson and Earl Campbell, both had more than 6,000 yards in their first four seasons. He is in elite company, certainly, and we may have just seen his last play of the night. So a successful debut to the 2000 season for Terrell Davis. Congratulated there by Bobby Turner, Ray Crockett. Numbers are good. Six carries, 33 yards, but most importantly, the knee looks strong, and he is healthy, at least through preseason week number one. Greasy will dump it to a Landis Gary, 
And Gary with a big stiff arm is down the Cardinals sideline. James Folston and Pat Tillman finally gather in Olandis Gary, who's been nursing a hamstring pull. But Gary's first play from scrimmage, Tony, a positive one for Denver. And you got to love Olandis Gary. You know, we spent some time talking to him at camp, and he had the hamstring problem, could not wait to get back in there because, uh, as he reminds everybody, he wants to make sure Mike Shanahan knows he's still the number two guy. Well, he took Kwame Lasseter with that big right arm and put him to the ground. You take a look at what he accomplished last year, 1,159 yards rushing for the Denver rookie. Greasy with a play fake. I read the tackle. Plenty of time, and now we'll dump it. And this is Dwayne Carswell. And Carswell, with a stiff arm of his own, takes Johnny Rutledge, the linebacker, and puts him down. And that will be another Denver first down. Carswell's second catch of the night. Kind of a tough guy to tackle. Yeah, he's 260 pounds. The nice thing about this play, Greasy with a good play fake, and then enough presence he didn't like what he saw downfield, but finds his check down man in Dwayne Carswell. Well, I don't know if you could see it at the bottom of your screen. He had McCaffrey on a slant, and McCaffrey had about three steps. First down, Denver, easily their best drive from the Cardinal 18. McGriff in motion, and Greasy will throw. In zone pro is going to be touchdown Denver, Rod Smith. Rod Smith beat Tom Knight on a post pattern, and Brian Greasy right on the money. Tremendous throw. We talked about Mike Shanahan wanting the Bronco offense to show some life this drive. They certainly did. Well, you know, these two receivers, you talk about Rod Smith and Ed McCaffrey. Rod Smith. Man, has oh, just man. been tremendous over the past couple of years. McCaffrey's coming off a career year. I'll tell you what, that's horrible coverage by Tom Knight. He looked like he must have been expecting some help in the middle. Obviously didn't get it. And I said this earlier, he's the guy that's used to help. I mean, everybody knows Aeneas Williams on the other side, but uh, when you get to Knight and he drops back more than 15 or 20 yards, he's a guy that kind of relies on help. He's not great in man-to-man, -man, and he showed it there. Jason Elam with the extra point. And with three minutes and two seconds, the Broncos have forged a tie here in Tempe. Welcome back to Tempe. Dave Logan, Tony Zarello with you. Three minutes and two seconds to go in the first quarter. Broncos have answered the Cardinals' initial score. Good drive, seven plays, 68 yards, and Brian Greasy to Rod Smith from 18 yards out, and Tony, the throw was perfect, and so was the route. Yeah, it was a great throw, but I would take my, I would put my money on Rod Smith every time, one-on-one. -on -one. Nothing against Tom Knight, but he's not Aeneas Williams, and Rod had him every step of the way, and that about three steps on him. So Jason Elam with the kick. Marte Jenkins, about five yards deep of the end zone, decides to bring it out. Penalty flag thrown as Jenkins is upended crossing the 20-yard line. Tackle there by Chris Watson and also by Darius Clark. And this, again, will go against the Cardinals. So that will negate a 26-yard return by Marte Jenkins. You can see Vince Tobin not happy with that. I think Tobin's on the hot seat this year. Dave. Holding. No question. Receiving Finally, you're number 49 contract. during the return. 10 yard penalty. Arizona keeps the ball. First down. Six and 10 last year. Tobin, of course, played his football at the University of Missouri under Dan Devine. And has been around. Been in the CFL, been in the USFL, been a defensive coordinator in the NFL for 18 years. And had great success on the defensive side of the ball. Well, in fairness to him, two years ago, they seemed like they were on the verge. We talked about the win down in Dallas in the playoffs. Uh, last year, it all unraveled. But uh, this is a key year for him. Makovica and Pittman behind Jake Plummer, who continues. This is the draw to Pittman. And a big hole. Pittman is going to be up over the 25-yard line. That will be a first down as Eric Brown, the third-year safety from Mississippi State, has to make the tackle. We talked about injuries. Eric Brown suffering a knee injury last year that ended his season prematurely. But Tony, another big hole for this Arizona running game. Yeah, they don't go to a two-back offense very often with Makovica in there. I think he, he's the one that picked up Al Wilson, but this guy looks tremendous tonight. You can see here, good, solid tackle by Eric Brown on a big back. Al Wilson had him, if not for Makovica, but again, they don't go to that set too often. First down at the 26. This is Pittman again, hit hard by Monte Rager. Rager, who has really looked good in training camp, the second-round draft choice last year for the Broncos, and in Trevor Price's absence, Rager's had a chance to step in with the first-team defense, and 
Mike Shanahan and Greg Robinson say this guy has earned rotation in the regular season just based on his preseason play thus far. Yeah, clearly he's not Trevor Price yet. I mean, Trevor Price is a pro bowler, but uh, you know, he's gotten a lot of reps in camp. I think he surprised them a little bit. He's put on some weight. He might have added about 20 pounds, which still leaves him short of Trevor, but he's really uh, impressed him. Has excellent quickness inside. Loss of two on the play, second and 12. Pressure now. Pass is going to be complete up over the 30-yard line. Once again, Frank Sanders with the catch. Jason Moore from his safety spot. Collar Sanders. You can see Plummer in the pocket. Still does not look completely comfortable. Jake Plummer last year really took a beating. He was sacked 27 times. Missed five games because of various injuries. Good throw that time to Frank Sanders. One thing he does have is uh, he's got three of the best receivers in football. Sanders, Rob Moore, and David Boston. We haven't seen much of Boston thus far. Third and two, and Arizona time will out, take Arizona. a timeout. That's their first charge timeout. It's a 30 second timeout. Back in 1998, the Cardinals with their first playoff appearance since 1982, and they got a playoff win on the road against the Dallas Cowboys. That's the first playoff win for the Cardinals since 1947. He's counting. Wow. But they seemed as though, you know, and you may remember, then they went up to Minnesota and they hung in that game for a while. So they seemed as though they were on the verge. Last year it all unraveled. They, they seemed, to, seemed to have holdouts every year. This year uh, it's Simeon Rice who called Phoenix the armpit of the NFL. Just a reminder, the 2000 Summer Olympic Games just around the corner, 9 News and NBC. Are you home for all Olympic coverage? We're going to send Jim Benneman. Our new news anchor over to uh, Sydney. You can catch all the daily coverage along with the festivities and the spirit of the games here in Memphis. Third down and short. Double tight end set for Arizona. Play fake. Plummer is down, and he's going to be down shy of the necessary first down yardage. Third down and short. The play fake did not fool the Denver defense. And Jake Plummer, who has made so many things happen athletically, unable to pick up that first down. I think he had a shot at it. If he ran immediately when he first saw the hole, he hesitated just a bit, and that's what cost him. There you take a look at the Broncos' first-round draft choice once again, Delta O'Neal. It's, it's a fake punt, and Arizona is going to have a first down. That was a direct snap to Pat Tillman. And Tillman, who played collegiately right here at Arizona State, as you take a look at the special teams coach Rick Dennison for the Broncos, Tillman picks up the first down. Vince Tobin gambling in the first preseason game here at home. We'll take a timeout. The end of the first quarter, 7-7. Back as we start the second quarter, Dave Logan, Tony Zarella with you. Broncos and the Cardinals tied at 7. Arizona took the opening kickoff, went four plays, 87 yards, and Rob Moore hauling in a 39-yard touchdown pass from Jake Plummer. Broncos on their third possession answered. A seven-play, 68-yard drive. Rod Smith, 18 yards out from Brian Greasy, and that's where we stand as we open quarter number two. Yeah, and I'm not surprised they're leaving Plummer in after what he went through a year ago. He's finally healthy, finally feels good, and uh, if I were, you know, he, he wants to play the first half, Tobin's going to let him. Sanders and Moore split left. Makovica and Pittman behind Plummer who play fake, chased by Mike Lodish. Plummer on the run, throws it into the Bronco bench, incomplete. That would not be intentional grounding because Plummer outside the tackle box, second and ten. A nice play by Lodish. You know, Lodish is one of those guys who consistently comes in every year, and I think people project somebody else beating him out, and he's always there on the roster when the season starts, and that was a nice play. Yeah, Mike Lodish in his 11th year out of UCLA, has been a productive guy. You're exactly right. Every year they look to try to move somebody in front of him and unrestricted free agent signed from the Bills back in 95. Every time he's on the field, he makes something good happen for the Broncos. Second and 10. Handoff for not much. That is Thomas Jones, the first round draft choice at the University of Virginia. And Chris Gizzy getting some playing time right now there for the Broncos. 
Gizzy. Of course, from the Air Force Academy. What a great career he had for Fisher to bury. And one of those guys that I think some people may consider a long shot, but always seems to make something happen when he's on the football field. Bronco defense would like to make something happen here. Third and nine from the Cardinal 41. Blitz on his way. Plummer hit as he throws. This pass is going to be intercepted. Jimmy Spencer is going to walk into the end zone, and that is a Denver touchdown with no flags. Well, Jake Plummer got hit right as he threw the football, and Jimmy Spencer had to hit him right in the chest. Spencer in his ninth year from the University of Florida. A free agent acquisition this year for the Broncos. Well, they were coming. You see Romanowski gets picked up. Eric Brown does not. And Plummer obviously wishes he had that one back. And David Boston, the wide receiver, didn't even know the ball had been thrown. So the Broncos, for the first time, take the lead here in Tempe. Tom ruined the holder. Elam's extra point try is perfect. And the Denver defense makes a big play. 14-01 to go here in the first half. Jimmy Spencer, a return for a touchdown of an interception in Denver, has the lead with a 45-yard interception for a touchdown. Spencer, of course, coming to the Broncos this offseason from the Chargers. He had four interceptions last year for San Diego, which led the team. Well, he's, we talked to Greg Robinson. One thing yeah. he told us today, Tony, very, very competitive. He likes that he comes to work every day. Well, absolutely. There had been some speculation when they brought in Terrell Buckley that people are either going to pencil him in right away as one of the starters. Uh, it's Spencer's job to lose right now. Played also in New Orleans a couple of years with the Bengals and the last two with the Chargers. Welcome to Denver. 14-7. to Jason Elam will kick it away. And again, Marte Jenkins on the run at the five. Collard with one arm by Mike Anderson at about the 25-yard line. Well, we talked about the Broncos bringing a couple of guys here on the blitz. Romanowski gets picked up on Plummer's right side. Unfortunately for Plummer, Brown does not. And it's not a surprise that the Broncos are showcasing a little of this. We talked with Robinson this morning, and he talked to, you know, even though you don't want to show everything and you're only using about 50% of your plays, he wants to see how the new guys do in, in the system that they're going to be running in the regular season. And they look pretty good on that one. So Dave Brown, now quarterback for Arizona. Brown in his ninth season out of Duke. Five starts last year in Plummer's absence, and they got three wins. That's incomplete. Big hit there by Delta O'Neill. O'Neill coming up and really putting the wood to Dennis McKinley, third-year fullback out of Mississippi State. Well, it's no secret Mike Shanahan just loves this guy, not only for his punt and his kick returns, although I think a lot of people believe he could be one of the best ever at punt and kick returns in this league, but they're going to play him extensively tonight at the corner, and they feel by sometime mid-season or so, you're going to see a lot of him at the corner. Second and 10. Ball at the 27-yard line. Broncos lead 14-7. to seven. Brown changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Short drop. Slant is deflected in the air. That's going to be intercepted here. Eric Brown. Brown. Tackled from behind by Thomas Jones. And the Broncos on two consecutive series get interceptions. Robinson loves this defense. You talked about it earlier. It's going to take a little time. Spencer had to return the favor, so he tip drills it to uh, Eric Brown. Brown gave him one. He gives it right back. Well, David Boston, the receiver, has got to continue that route. You can't slow up there. You can see bottom of your screen, that ball's got to be, if you're a receiver, you've got to force your way inside Jimmy Spencer. Spencer with the deflection. Eric Brown makes the catch, and the Bronco offense in business inside the Cardinal 35-yard line. And Gus Farratt is the Bronco quarterback. Play fake, and Farratt with plenty of time. Fires right sideline. That pass is going to be caught. And Travis McGriff will have a Bronco first down. Coverage in the play by Kobe Reinhardt. McGriff is a guy that last year was a little bit lost. 
but really has had an excellent training camp as you take a look at Gus Barat. Seven years in the National Football League one Pro Bowl season. First and 10 Denver. At the Cardinals 17. Handoff Gary big hole. Well I tell you Landis Gary hit there by Ray Thompson. When he squares his shoulders. He's bringing a load. He's not showing any side side effects of the uh, hamstring injury. He's got the burst. He is not a presence a, a pleasant sight. I don't think the defensive backs when he uh, creases that defensive line. Gain of seven. Second and three with 1244 to go here in the first half. It's Gary and Detron Smith behind Gus Barat. Handoff left side. That's Gary inside the five yard line. He'll have a Denver first down. Hit there by Jabari Iza. That's a fabulous effort here by Gary. Breaking one tackle right there and picking up an extra three or four yards. One of those guys that's always falling forward, which you just can't seem to teach a running back. Good job by the Bronco offensive line, too, just creating a nice push on that left side, and you allow a back like Gary to simply pick and choose as to where he wants to cut. First and goal inside the five. Play fake. Barat wide open in the end zone, but not handling the football is Andre Cooper. Tom Knight, the closest Cardinal, but that's one Cooper has got to catch. Yeah, you had him. The Cardinals bought this the whole way. And you've got Knight one on one. Cooper's got to pull that in. Great play fake and for right, right on the money. You can see Cooper right there has got to make the catch, but he bobbles once, twice, and by the time he can gather it in, he's already out of the back of the end zone. And not something, you know, Andre Cooper finds himself in an interesting battle with uh, more than a few receivers this year. He's got to pull that one in. Second and goal. Handoff left side and. Landis Gary tripped up for a loss. Mark Maddox was there. So was Angel Rubio, who may have got Gary by the shoe tops, but it'll be a loss in the play. Well, Maddox left all alone. It's a loss of about four. Brings up third and goal, and I think the Broncos are going to take a timeout. Boy, so many times when you have a chance to knock it in and you don't make a play, you wind up settling for three. We'll see what the Broncos do when we come back. 11-22 to go here in the first half. Denver enjoying a 14-7 lead over the Arizona. One of the areas that Mike Shanahan wanted to improve most on last year was their red zone efficiency. Anytime you get inside the opponent's 20-yard line. And here's a perfect opportunity. Third down and goal from the seventh. They took over after the interception by Eric Brown at the Cardinal 33. Barat has Cooper in motion. Blitz on the way. Gus lobs over the end zone. Wide open touchdown. That is touchdown Desmond Clark. And he got locked on the middle linebacker Ronald McKinnon. But a nice throw by Gus Farad and Desmond Clark with the touchdown catch and the Broncos have their third touchdown of the first half. Well it's a nice throw but it's a sweet catch by Clark. They love this guy. He's got tons of potential. And may have him keeping four tight ends again this year. They did that a, a year ago although Clark didn't dress for the games but uh, this year I think you can see him dressing for the games and that's a nice pull. Pretty throw by Gus Farad, and this is the kind of throw that you can tell a quarterback knows he's got a receiver wide open, just put some air underneath it. Now let the big fella go get it, and that's exactly what Desmond Clark did. Desmond Clark, the all-time leading receiver in ACC football history with 216 catches. He's got a touchdown here in the preseason. The Broncos lead it 20 to 7. Extra point when we return to Tempe. The injured Bronco player, Chris Doring being helped off a left knee injury. And that doesn't look very good. Dorian, of course, who made this football team last year as a free agent. 6'4 and 195 in his third year out of the University of Florida. 
he finds himself uh, in pretty much the same battle as Andre Cooper. Because, you know, everybody wants to be that number three guy. McGriff is a step ahead of him, and this certainly isn't going to help his chances. So we will await word from the Bronco bench about Chris Norrin. Ruin spots at Elam, hooks it a bit, but through the uprights, and with 11-16 to go here in the second quarter, Broncos now lead 21-7. We talked about the tight ends. Uh, interesting to see uh, Clark on the receiving end of that one. You know, it's like a tight end by committee as they try to find the one guy, or maybe it'll take three or four guys to make up for the loss of a Shannon Sharp. Yeah, Desmond Clark is a guy that is now 260 pounds and was a college wide receiver. As I mentioned, the all-time leader in ACC football history with 216 career catches. That's a bunch of catches in a, in a conference that loves to throw the football. Just a reminder, you can join me tomorrow night, 10.35, and each Sunday all season long for Broncos tonight. We're going to kick it off tomorrow night. The game highlights, of course, reactions, interviews, in-depth pieces, plus uh, the entire recap of the AFC West and the NFL. Adam Schefter from the Denver Post is back with us this year. And again, we kick it off tomorrow night. Broncos tonight, Sunday nights at 10.35 here on 9 News. So the Broncos are three consecutive scores after falling behind 7-0. And Elam once again to Marte Jenkins from the two. Got great speed. Penalty flag thrown as Jenkins is collared out of bounds by Delta O'Neal. Actually now a couple of penalty flags. Marte Jenkins, one of the fastest players in the NFC. Yeah, I think he'd be considered a project, uh, Dave. I'm not sure if they know when he'll be able to catch some passes for him. But they love his speed. He's one of the fastest guys in the uh, not only the conference, the league. Offsetting penalties. As we take a look at Marte Jenkins. The one thing that you can't teach, and we've talked with Mike Shanahan about this, is not necessarily just speed on the returns. The one thing he loves about a guy like Delta O'Neal is the ability to cut on the move instead of just run straight ahead. I mean, speed's great, but that doesn't guarantee you're going to be a great return. Number 34. Correction, number 24. By rule, the penalty's offset. Arizona keeps the ball at the spot of their foul. First down. You can see O'Neal got Jenkins by the mask with that left hand. And so the return will stand because of the offsetting penalties. You'll see it again on this angle. Watch his left hand. Right there. And so from the 25-yard line, the Cardinals will have a first and 10. And Dave Brown for his second series. We were talking about Brown, who has had his moments, started 53 of 57 games for the Giants back between 92 and 97. He stayed here this year with other offers because he felt like he had a better chance to play. Handoff hit in the backfield. Mate Rager almost took the handoff that time from Brown to Thomas Jones. <laughs> we talked about his quickness, but that's that's real quick. Yeah, you know, he just looks better and better by the play. I thought that Brown was going to hand it off to Monte. I'm sure he didn't look good to Thomas Jones, who probably, even though a rookie is in the huddle now, saying, fellas, how about we block 99? And yeah, nobody picked them up. Loss of five, Mike Devlin. Not doing a good job on Rager that time. Here comes the blitz. Brown will hand off on the draw. And Chris Gizzy gobbles up Thomas Jones. Jones, the first round draft choice we mentioned out of Virginia, and Phoenix really likes him. And they compare him, ironically, a bit to Terrell Davis, although I don't know that he's shown that in college. He's a that tough of runner inside. But Thomas Jones, 5'11", 210, has excellent hands, and uh, they like his work ethic already. They love his hands. They also compare him to a Marshall Falk. And, you know, you draft a guy seventh overall in the draft, you think he's going to play. But, again, we, we've seen Pittman, and Pittman trying to stay a step ahead of him, and he looks tremendous. Third and 14 now from the 21. And I think this is going to be, well, the Broncos jumped, the Cardinals reacted. 
I think Hasselbeck moved initially, and then L.J. Shelton reacted. Now, if the officials deem that Hasselbeck's movement forced Shelton to react, it'll be against the Broncos. Defense number 96 came into the neutral zone, causing the all offense to fall start. Therefore, encroachment, defense, five-yard penalty, repeat third down. And Ed Hockley's hot, too. Well, Harold finally getting some reps. A little over anxious. Harold Hasselbeck, a guy that uh, figures to make this team. Seventh-year player from the University of Washington. Dependable player. As Brown drops back, loads it up right side and wide open. The catch is made. That's going to be David Boston. Boston walked out of bounds by Eric Brown and Terrell Buckley, but that will be a Phoenix first down. Boston, the first pick in the last draft for these Arizona Cardinals, record-setting wide receiver from Ohio State. Big guy, 6'2 and 211 pounds. Well, he's a fabulous compliment to Sanders and to Rob Moore. And having a guy like uh, Boston as your number three receiver, I mean, he's going to get picked up a lot of times by a safety or even a linebacker at times, and it's a mismatch. First down at the Bronco 47-yard line. Handoff, the quick Jones is upended as he gets inside the 45 by Chris Gizzy. Brown to Boston, by the way, good for 27 yards. Clock at 8.30 and counting. Second quarter action. 21-7, Denver with the lead. Dave Logan, Tony Zarella in Tempe, Arizona. Game time temperature about 109 degrees. On the field, some 90 minutes prior to kickoff, 120 degrees. As Brown throws wide open middle of the field, this is going to be caught in a first down. First down catch made by veteran Derek Brown. Brown that time beating Steve Russ for the first down. All the way down to the 25 yard line. And Der Derek Brown, the tight end who has been around, Tony, with a pretty good move and catch here. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, a lot of people remember him from Notre Dame. Get a great shot to play a lot this year. They're not sure what they're going to do with Hardy, the starter. In fact, Gedney will probably end up starting a tight end for them, but Brown gives him a tremendous number two or number three tight end. And he's a little quicker than Hardy. Hardy's built like a Carswell. Played with the Giants, signed last year as an unrestricted free agent from the Raiders. First down. This is Jones. Stutter steps and then is stopped as he gets to about the 24-yard line. And that's the reason why a lot of people here in uh, Tempe, Phoenix area, think that Pittman's going to hold this kid off. I mean, Pittman's one of these guys like a Terrell who just hits the hole so hard. And at this point, Thomas Jones, still a little tentative, still running like he's running in college, which you can have that extra half a step, half a second before you burst through the hole. Of course, he's probably aware that this was not a great running team last year. They ranked in the bottom three of NFL stats, averaging 75 yards per game on the ground. That coupled with the Jake Plummer injury problem, Spell doom for this Cardinal offense. Second and eight, Broncos show blitz. Brown quick drop. Fires left. Pass is going to be caught by Brown. Hit down after a short game by Al Wilson. It's a nice play by Brown getting rid of that ball. The Broncos were coming. The uh, Cardinals just have been horrendous over the past uh, couple of years at picking up the blitz, and we've seen what it can do for the Broncos when they're when they're bringing people with the uh, defensive touchdown. But a nice play by Brown to get rid of that quickly. Brown to Brown and a good tackle by Wilson. Third down and four with a little more than six minutes to go in the first half. Brown in the pocket. Pass is going to be caught. This will be a Cardinal first down. Pass complete to Mac Cody. We talked about him earlier as a return guy, Jason Moore for the Broncos with the tackle. And even inside the red zone, they're going to nickel and dime you. You know, we talked about this earlier. Uh, with Tressman coming over from the Niners, they love this stuff. They want the short slants, the, the short cut across the middle patterns. And they're just going to, even inside the red zone, which is surprising, they're going to try to do these little dink-off passes. Matt Cody, 5'9", 170 pounds. He was cut by St. Louis last year in training camp and signed by the Cardinals. First and 10 Arizona from just outside the 10. Jones. 
stutter steps, a lot of moves, but only a couple of yards. I think Thomas Jones will find that in the NFL, you can't do a lot of the things that you were successful doing when you were a very good college back. Now you can hold back. I mean, the, the guys in the NFL are so much quicker, it's even a friend, especially a friend, than the guys in college, and you don't have that extra half second to dance around a little bit. You've got to hit the holes. The game certainly is faster. Delta O'Neal right there might have got away with the face mask. Gain of a couple, second and two. Cardinals down 21 to seven, trying to answer here before halftime. Brown, not much of a play fake, throws into the end zone, incomplete. Pass intended for Matt Cody. Coverage by Chris Watson. And there's a man that has been somewhat forgotten. Chris Watson, who last year had an excellent rookie campaign. Third round draft choice for the Broncos, but right now fighting for his life to make the team. I think it's going to be a tough fight for him. I mean, you, you've got Delph O'Neill and you've got uh, Terrell Buckley when you want to go to the return bend, and it's amazing what a difference a year can make because now he finds himself fighting for the job. Dave Brown, pretty good showing here in the first half, four for seven. Third down and eight. From just outside the eighth, the Cardinals can get a first down inside the Bronco one. Brown, pressure, throws, incomplete through the hands of Thomas Jones. Coverage by Al Wilson. And Wilson once again shaken up. Wilson trotting to the sideline now, being attended to, but at least he was able to get up and remove himself from the game. Well, that is the look of the linebacker. He's fierce. Whew. He is fierce. Had a chance to sit down with him the other day, and, uh, and and he's quick to remind you of this. I mean, he had a fabulous rookie year, as you said, and he's quick to remind you that uh, you cannot measure the size of a man's heart. Kerry Blanchard from 26 yards out knocks it through. And with 4.28 to go here in the first half, Kerry Blanchard from 21 yards out Cuts the Broncos lead 21 to 10. Pretty good drive by Arizona and Dave Brown at quarterbacks. Uh, 12 plays, 67 yards. And Brown able to move the uh, the second team offense basically. Delta O'Neill for the Broncos. Blanchard with the kick. O'Neill at the 10 yard line. Stutter steps his way up over the 25. Before being knocked down there by Melvin Bradley. Return of 19 yards. And the Broncos will start first and 10 from their 28. Take a look at the Cardinals scoring drive. 12 plays, 67 yards. Kerry Blanchard signed as a free agent in the offseason, replacing Chris Jackie. Good from 21. Farrat remains at quarterback. Play fakes in the pocket. Dumps it. Pass is going to be caught by John Avery, and that's going to be very close to a Bronco first down. Corey Chavis, the nephew of former Bronco great Barney Chavis, on the tackle. Nice play by Gus. Nice improvisation there. Um Thought about running for about a half a second until he saw Avery, and that was a smart move. That's usually about how long most quarterbacks think about running. A half a second? Yeah. A little short of the first down, second and one. Cooper and McGriff, the wide receivers, both right side. This is Avery who tries to bend it back and will wind up losing yardage. Corey Sears. The third year defensive end from Mississippi State. Another one of those former St. Louis Cardinal players. He too was waived in the offseason last year. And Avery bends it right back to the big fellow on that play. Avery didn't have much time to make a move on that one, but uh, I will tell you this. They see a different Avery than they saw a year ago. They think he's hitting the holes a lot better. They just feel they feel like he's making that burst, and he and he wasn't doing that when they picked him up from Miami last year. Third and three from the 35, and whistles will blow this play dead. 
Timeout, Arizona. That's their second charge timeout. It's a 30 second timeout. So the Cardinals will take a timeout. You take a look at Vince Tobin, who earlier today talked about how he would approach this game and you and I visited about this a little bit. He said he was really going to keep it close to the vest and it didn't really matter what you do in preseason. In terms of winning the game, he wanted to take a look at some of his younger players. I think he surprised a few people with the fake punt. Absolutely. We, we mentioned this earlier. He's not one of these guys that's known for showing anything but base offense, base defense in the preseason. Back to action with 250. Nine to go in the first half. Third down and short. Parat on the play fake. Pumps once. Now delivers. And this is going to be caught by Desmond Clark. Clark with his second catch of the night. Rolled out of bounds by Justin Lucas, the second year safety from Abilene Christian College. And the Broncos will have yet another first down. Another nice play by Farad here as he uh, spins back and finds Clark. And you know, he's been progressively more and more comfortable in camp. I think the first week or so was a little tougher, Gus Farad. But he's been getting a little more confident with the system, learning more of the plays. They're only using about half of the plays tonight, but uh, on those rollouts, he looks pretty good. First and 10 from the 47. Farad, five-step drop. Pass is going to be deflected, and that will be intercepted. Intercepted by Ray Thompson, the rookie out of Tennessee. Thompson, a former teammate of Al Wilson, this year's second-round draft choice, picks the deflection out of the air, and the Cardinals with their first turnover. Oh, well, we're going to see it again. I think Darwin Walker may have been the Cardinal player that got his hand on it, big number 75. Walker, believe it or not, also a rookie out of Tennessee. So a couple of former volunteers getting together and making something happen for the Cardinals. So Arizona will take over first and 10 from their 48-yard line with 2.28 to go in the first half. Brown again appears to be changing the play. Five-step drop, deep ball left side. That's going to be incomplete into and out of the arms of David Boston. Coverage on the play by Delta O'Neal. That looked like a ball that should have been caught. I thought that was a tremendous throw by Brown. you got to make that catch. Boston usually does make that catch. And he had about a half a step on Delta. you got to pull that one in. That just falls right in. Yeah, that's a play that you got to make. Boston, a big, strong receiver. That does not make quarterbacks happy. If you're a lip reader, I couldn't get the first part, but the last part was catch the ball. Second and ten. Hand off. This is Thomas Jones, who bends it back to the right side. He's going to be in Bronco territory at about the 47-yard line, hit there by Steve Russ. Well, you can see the quickness of Thomas Jones. And I don't know whether it'll be him or Michael Pittman or maybe a combination of both, but I would say the Cardinal running game looks to be in much better shape than last year. Well, it couldn't be any worse, and it didn't help Jake Plummer last year uh, how inept they were at running the football. They have said they don't want a platoon. So if one of these guys is going to win this job, but Jones, they, gotta, they don't draft a number seven and not play him. Two-minute warning. Broncos lead it 21 to 10 in Tempe. Asking the heat, can you ease up on a brother? It's a steam bath out here. Jamie Foxx. Mm. Hot. Woo! Hot step. Hot step. Sarah's gonna hot. Court life. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Jamie, mouth to mouth. What? I don't think so. Well, that lifeguard bit didn't work. Cool's life. Yeah. Integrity, innovation, accountability, and community commitment. That's how Touchstone Energy Cooperatives bring customers, large and small, quality, state-of-the-art technology at affordable rates. Touchstone Energy Cooperatives already serve millions of businesses and homes all across America. We are your local, consumer-owned electric cooperative. 
bringing you the power of human connection. Introducing AT&T Digital Pocket Net Service. Free unlimited access to the wireless internet to let you trade stocks, stay up on sports, and even keep up with the world news. It's technology that lets you divide and conquer. So while you may be just one person, you can be in more than one place at one time. Wireless from AT&T. Your world close at hand. Two minutes left in the first half. Dave Logan along with Tony Zarella here. Uh, the Broncos with an 11-point lead, although the Cardinals driving inside the 50. Just a reminder, we're going back to 9 News for a halftime update, then coming back here for the stats and highlights. Just a couple of minutes. Cardinals from the 47 now, facing third and five. And Brown in the shotgun. Flips on the way. The pass in the flat is going to be incomplete. Intended for Thomas Jones and Nate Wayne with excellent coverage. But once again, Tony, as we see a flag in the play, and this is going to be roughing the passer. Once again, pressure by the Bronco defense on a Cardinal quarterback. Yeah, they're blitzing a little more than I thought they would tonight. Although, again, you know, we're talking to Robinson, he wanted to show off a little stuff. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 28, hitting the quarterback below the knees. 15-yard penalty, first down. That would be the rookie out of Arkansas, Kanoi Kennedy. And obviously, officials have to protect quarterbacks. They don't want you going low on quarterbacks in the pocket. Speaking of Kanoi Kennedy, I know not a great way to break in, but boy, do they like him. They love him. They, they love traded him. up the second round to have a chance to draft him, and he has been everything and more thus far in training camp. They think he could be a steal. Still a first down now. First and 10 as Brown drops back, tries to set up the screen. And Mike Lodich will get credit for the sack. But three or four members of the Bronco front four doing an excellent job of reading the screen, and Dave Brown just didn't get rid of the football. Lodich a bit slow to get to his feet. And Monty Rager is still down. Well, tremendous coverage downfield. Brown with nowhere to go, nowhere to throw. And that is what you would call a game cut. You can see Steve Antonopoulos and his staff. Ted Schlegel on the left, one of the Bronco orthopedic doctors. A loss of eight on the play. It'll be second and 18. The clock at a minute and 47 of the first half. Monty Rager. That weight actually last year's 256 last year is up to about 278 this year. Yeah, we talked about him bulking up. It still leaves him uh, 20 pounds shy of Trevor Price, maybe. But you're going to see this at the end of the play. To the right of your screen, Monte going down. And may have actually been hit by one of his own teammates. Tough to see there. Just a bunch of big bodies. The Rager able to walk off, although slowly under his own power. And I'd say a pretty impressive first half for him. As we told you earlier, they love his quickness, and they think he's better suited to play inside. He was drafted in the second round out of Texas Tech last year as a defensive end, an undersized defensive end, but now with an additional 20 pounds, they do think he's better suited to play inside as Bronco defense. Second and 18. As you see, with a minute 47 to go in the half, and Dave Brown is back in the shotgun. Broncos with pressure. Brown on the move. Nate Wayne powers him as he throws the ball incomplete. That was a technical play by Nate Wayne, who was coming all the way. And uh, you talk about a burst of speed. Brown had no chance on this one. Well, Nate Wayne, his third year out of Mississippi, one of the things the Bronco coaching staff has talked about is the speed of their linebacking core. Mike Shanahan told us that he feels like this is the deepest linebacking core that he's had since he's been here. Wayne, of course, playing in place of John Mobley and Glenn Cadres. 
but it's that, you know, the speed makes him so valuable, not only a linebacker, but on the special teams, which is where he's going to make a difference and, and make the squad again. Third and 18. Oh, yeah. And I think the Cardinals may have uh, moved a bit in the backfield. Thomas Before Jones. The snap, ball start, offense, number 26. Five-yard penalty, still third down. You know, we talk about the battle of wide receiver, but if you look at the uh, linebackers, let's say Mike Shanahan goes with six linebackers. You know who the starting three are. You know Glenn Cadrez. And then you look at a guy like Nate Wayne. You know Ian Gold's on the team. you got a lot of quality bodies there for only six jobs. You've got Chris Gizzy and Steve Russ. You've got Ricardo McDonald, who we think will see a little bit in the second half. He's a nine-year player signed this year from Chicago. You see the penalties, five for the Cardinals. Three for Mike Shanahan. Well, third and forever. Third and 23. Brown in the pocket. Three-man rush. This is Thomas Jones. And that is Chris Watson. Coordinator's nightmare. Third and 20-plus because teams will rush three, drop eight, and they force you to throw the ball underneath and then just come up and make the tackle. And the Cardinals blow a golden scoring opportunity after the interception. So Scott Player will kick it away and try to pin the Broncos deep. Delta O'Neill once again for Denver. Pooch kick, and I think he got too much of it. About seven yards too much of it, and into the Bronco end zone, the ball goes. This is a uh, touchback, but there's a penalty flag thrown on the play. Billy Jenkins limping off. And this apparently will go against Holy. Arizona. Offense number 46. The penalty is declined. Denver's ball, first down. So 43 seconds to go here in the first half. It's been a good one for the Broncos. They lead Arizona 21 to 10. As you can see, some of the members of the second unit for the Bronco offensive line, Cooper Carlisle, David Diaz and Fonte, who's back after one year in Philadelphia. Trey T getting some time. Chris Banks. There's Travis McGriff, 5'8, 185. McGriff this year bench pressed 225 pounds 25 times. Just stop and think about that for a second. He's he weighs 185. He benched 225, 25 times. Yeah, there's no doubt he's a strong kid, and, and, and maybe that answers, we'll see in the game when he when he catches a few passes, maybe that answers the concerns of a lot of fans. Well, at 5'8", how does he get off the line in passing situations? That would help. He seems to be much more comfortable, and right now, I would guess, the leading candidate for the Broncos' third receiver spot. Both teams will uh, leave the field, and it's been a good first half for the Denver Broncos. Twenty-one to ten, the Broncos with the lead. The Cardinals scored first. Denver came back with three touchdowns, including two touchdown passes: one from Greasy, one from Farrat. Jimmy Spencer with a 45-yard interception return for a touchdown, and that was the scoring for Denver. Twenty-one ten at halftime in Tempe. More after these messages.